Our next item for consideration is H.R. 825, the banning operations and leases with the illegitimate Venezuelan Act. The clerk will please designate the bill. H.R. 825, the Banning Operations and Leases with the Illegitimate Venezuelan Act, a bill to prohibit contracting with persons that have business operations with the Maduro regime and for other purposes. Without objection, the bill should be considered as read and open for amendment at any point. Without objection, so ordered. The chair recognizes himself to offer an amendment in the nature of a substitute. The clerk, please designate the amendment. An amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 825 is offered by Mr. Comer of Kentucky. Without objection, the amendment is considered as read, and the substitute will be considered as original text for the purposes of further amendment. I recognize myself for five minutes for a statement on the bill and the amendment. The people of Venezuela have faced years of repression. Political persecution, human rights abuses, and press censorship are all commonplace under the brutal, illegitimate, anti-American regime of uh, Maduro a regime closely allied with Russia, Iran, Cuba, and the People's Republic of China. The American government should always stand in solidarity with the long-suffering people of Venezuela and against uh, the di this dictatorship. Part of that solidarity should be to ensure uh, that the current regime is denied any resources that will allow it to continue the oppression of its citizenry. This past July, uh, Maduro and his representatives falsely claimed victory in Venezuela's presidential election. As usual, uh, he's been accused of intimidating and repressing his opposition in order to cling to power. Just last week on September 12th, the U.S. sanctioned 16 of his allies in response to accusations that they engaged in human rights abuses and election obstruction. While not all of his allies will be subject to sanctions, the money of hardworking U.S. taxpayers should not, be ultimately, should not ultimately find its way to those who support the regime of a ruthless dictator. H.R. 825 is straightforward. It requires federal agencies to ensure that they are not contracting with any entity that conducts business uh, with his allies. That said, it also includes appropriate exceptions, such as situations of national security for the purposes of providing humanitarian assistance, disaster relief, and other urgent life-saving measures, or to carry out non-combatant evacuations. This is not a, con a new concept to the U.S. Congress. The Fiscal Year 2020 National Defense Authorization Act contained a provision Section 890, that prohibited the Pentagon from entering into contracts with companies that also have contracts with any Venezuelan government entity uh, under his control. As with uh, H.R. 825, there are waivers for contracts related to providing humanitarian assistance and disaster relief, among other exemptions. The Bolivar Act would extend the prohibitions under Section 890 to the rest of the federal government. I support uh, this act, and I want to thank my colleagues on the committee, Representative Mike Waltz and Representative Debbie Washerman Schultz, for leading this bill. I ask my colleagues to support H.R. 825, a measured response and most timely piece of legislation. I now yield to Ranking Member Raskin for his statement. Um, 825. Thank uh, the Chairman. The Bolivar Act would temporarily prohibit executive agencies from entering into contracts for the procurement of goods or services with anybody uh, that they determine, with the concurrence of the Department of State, uh, who knowingly engages in significant business operations with the Maduro regime in Venezuela. The bill goes on to list certain ex exceptions, including contracts vital to U.S. national security or necessary for purposes of providing humanitarian assistance, disaster relief, and other urgent life-saving measures, or to carry out non-combatant evacuations. I certainly understand the motivation behind this bill. The Maduro regime's blatant disregard of the recent election results in Venezuela is a violation of international law and has left this undemocratic regime more isolated than ever. I know that the State Department believes the bill could exacerbate tensions with Venezuela, and contracting experts at OMB believe that the complexities and uncertainties involved in trying to implement a bill this far-reaching in an expedited time frame could cause more costs to the procurement system than the benefits that would be achieved. However, the Department of Defense, which conducts almost two-thirds of federal procurement, has had a policy in place just like the Bolivar Act for two years now. So I will support the bill today, but I do ask the chairman to work with us to try to address some of the administration's specific concerns before the bill goes to the floor. But uh, I will support it, and I yield back to you, Mr. Chairman. Chair now recognizes the sponsor of the bill, uh, gentleman from Florida, Mr. Waltz. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for bringing this uh, legislation uh, to the markup. Just a, a, a couple of 
points to add to your opening statement there. Um, you know, Venezuela has the largest oil reserves in the world. Uh, and despite this, the regime's mismanagement, their human rights violations, their repression, the massive corruption has created an economic contraction of over 80 percent of the Venezuelan economy with shortages in food, water, and fuel. Eight million Venezuelans have fled their country more than have the refugee crisis from places like Syria. And if we want to get to the root causes of uh, the migration crisis that's and the illegal immigration crisis that's facing the United States, this gets at it. Uh, thank you for noting uh, that Maduro has been charged by the U.S. Department of Justice for narco-terrorism and drug trafficking. Thank you for noting that uh, the NDAA uh, in 2020 put these restrictions on companies seeking to do business with the Defense Department. We're simply looking to expand that. It is bipartisan. It has been introduced by uh, by Representative Wasserman Schultz. I appreciate uh, the ranking members' uh, support for it as well. And similar legislation passed the U.S. Senate unanimously in the 117th Congress. And just in terms of uh, the concerns, a couple of things. One, you know, the, the concern that the bill would have any practical uh, effect other than to make U.S. government contracting more difficult or to unnecessarily raise tensions with the regime at this time, look, I think we need to send a very strong message uh, to any foreign company that wants to work with the United States government, needs to think twice about working with the Maduro regime, but I think the firms that will be most affected is any, uh, I mean, you have a number of foreign entities that are saying one thing and then they turn a blind eye uh, and are doing business with a brutal socialist dictatorship uh, with extrajudicial killings that have the, the opposition either in exile or under some type of arrest or in, house, or in hiding. Uh, and I, I firmly believe we need to take a stronger stand, and I think this is a bipartisan approach. Uh, the other concern uh, that this act may be observed as an escalation of policy, look, the prohibition is only in place for three years or when the U.S. government recognizes a legitimate government of Venezuela. Recognition is still the administration's prerogative. And the other claim that our targeted sanctions approach seeks to promote, that the, the administration's targeted sanction approach seeks to promote accountability for anti-democratic actors and not punish the Venezuelan people, I'll just remind my colleagues that the legislation explicitly exempts humanitarian assistance uh, and provides exemptions if it's in the national security interest of the United States. So I think that is, that is ample flexibility, uh, but we need to take a much stronger stand. Uh, enough is enough uh, in terms of the brutality of the Maduro regime, the impacts on the United States, with both from an energy standpoint and with a migration crisis, and I appreciate uh, both the chairman and ranking members support. I yield. Gentleman yields back. Do any other members seek recognition? Seeing none, uh, the question is now on the amendment in the nature of a substitute. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion, chair, the ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. The question is now in favorably reporting H.R. 825 is amended. All those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed, the chair recognize the gentleman from Arizona. Re request a roll call vote, please. A roll, a recorded vote is ordered as previously announced. Further proceedings on the question will be postponed. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes. Could I be recognized for unanimous consent request? Yes. Uh, I'd, there are two letters I would like to be submitted for the record, one from the National Treasury Employees Union and the other from the National